25 years later. Get in the car, Melinda. Matilda. Whatever. That is really cool to know that you were part of something that is generational. Hi, Dad. Are you in this family? I feel like Danny and I just kind of understood each other. I don't know what it was, but I, I immediately felt a connection with him. <laughs> I am not a good dancer. I've never been a very good dancer. And it also wasn't to Itty Bitty Pretty One, it was to Harry Belafonte's Matilda. Uh, but they ended up changing the music. The apple never rocks far from the tree. <laughs> Being in the chokey was a little scary too. And I'm going like this. And it's because it didn't smell good in what there. Did it like? <laughs> it kind of smelled like rotten egg. Mara, the inner child in me is feeling so honored to sit down with you. And then I'm also wondering how many people come up to you and say, I, you were my whole childhood. Like, how often do you get that? Probably at least once a week, people tell me how much they loved Matilda. It's so funny because I think when I was a child, I kind of couldn't conceive of the magnitude of it all. I don't think I ever thought that, you know, 25 years later, I would still be hearing from fans of it. 25 years later? Yeah. How old is Matilda? Four. I'm six and a half, Mommy. Five, then. I was six in August. You're a liar. Was there talk of this will be a classic for kids? Because it was based on a hugely popular book. Do you think anybody knew? I don't know if we knew. I think that we hoped that it would be a hit. And I think that Danny and, and you know, everybody who wrote, who wrote on it and, and worked on it, you know, we really hoped that it would do something. And we knew that there weren't a lot of movies like this where, you know, intelligence is rewarded and resourcefulness is rewarded. There also weren't that many, many movies about little girls and especially not little girls, you know, who, who had inner strength. What also blew my mind in my research was, according to the internet, it was not a box office success at the time. It was not a huge hit at the time. It did all right, but it didn't do very well. But it it became a cult hit, I think. Probably the coolest thing is when people tell me that they introduce their children to it. Oh. So they'll say, my daughter loves it, my son loves it, I watch it with my kids, and that is really cool to know that you were part of something that is generational. It seems like you and Danny did have this special bond. You yeah. called him kind of your uncle on set. I feel like Danny and I just kind of understood each other. I don't know what it was, but I, I immediately felt a connection with him. And I think that he was probably a lot of, like a lot of the people in my family, just full of good stories and a good sense of humor and very talkative and, and outgoing, but also very considerate. And he thought a lot about other people. And the same was true of Rhea. She was also the consummate performer, but she had a truly wonderful heart. Funnily enough, Pam Ferris. Your mommy is a twit. Who played Miss Trunchbull, she was like that. And Beth, who played Miss Honey, you know, she was like that too. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, all those characters you just mentioned, Danny and Rhea's and Miss Trunchbull, Danny's mean to you in the movie. So what was it like? How did he balance out? I gotta go scream at you in this scene. We definitely laughed about it. I wanted to stay with Miss Honey. Well, Miss Honey doesn't want you. Why would she want some snotty, disobedient kid? I think that sometimes when children are acting, they can kind of get in and out of it much easier because for children, it's kind of more like pretending. It's imagination. So, it's imagination and children love imagination and they're all about it. And he taught me how to do really cool things like. Like, he taught me how to do Pratt Falls, and he taught me how to do, uh, you know, fake slaps and, and stage combat things, and he would explain things to me. That was another great thing. Join the ranks. I think that uh, probably the funniest was working with Pam Ferris, because when Pam Ferris was not in full Trunchbull gear, she was just a very nice woman who, you know, never wore makeup, but was very beautiful and just wanted to talk to you about her cats and her dogs and her garden. She told us later that she felt like she always tried to be really tough uh, and tried to like keep a distance from the kid, but then one of the kids came up to her and grabbed her by the hand. And she knew that they knew that she was really a sweetheart. I love that. I actually <laughs> want to show you this clip because of course E.T. was on set of Matilda yes. 25 years ago. And we did an interview with a little Mara. <laughs> and here you are. Danny's really funny and he's really nice. <laughs> We tell jokes um, and riddles. He's a really funny guy, and when I come onto the set, every day he gives me a hug. That's true. Every day he would give me a hug. Every day, you know, we would joke with each other, and every day, it, it really did feel like he was kind of my favorite uncle. And also, you, you'll probably notice that I have my favorite teddy bear with me. <laughs> 
But I think that was also important because it meant that my mom and the people around me were happy with just letting me be a kid too. Your family really made sure you had a childhood. It was very important to my family that I remained a child. So I shared a room with my sister until we were, I think I was 14 and we moved house and finally I got my own room. And <laughs> I went to Girl Scouts and I went to a public school. And also where I grew up in Burbank, California, it's actually pretty common to be a child actor. Watch this. Do you have a favorite moment from filming? Oh my gosh, I have so many favorite moments. Doing the scene where we chase Miss Trunchbull out of the school was really fun. And you can actually see me like hugging Jacqueline who plays Amanda and us just being so full of joy. <laughs> the scene where I'm under the table, that they had to fit me into a body cast for. And yeah, that was what? a bit nerve wracking at first, but it's it was very, very fun being put under the table. Wait, why did you have to be in a body cast for Because that? they had to hook it up and they had to take like this harness and uh, put like wires through it so I could hold on to it like this and I didn't need to let go. And they got my dress and, and like two sizes bigger and uh, so the body cast would fit underneath it. <laughs> it's a little claustrophobic. It was a little scary. And you know, uh, being in the choke, it was a little scary too. The apple never rocks far from the tree. <laughs> The worst part of the chokey was that it smelled bad because they needed something to put smoke in it and the stuff they used to make smoke uh, did not smell so great. So uh, that's actually why there's a scene where Miss Honey removes me from the chokey and I'm going like this. And it's because it didn't smell good in what there. Did it <laughs> it kind of smelled like rotten eggs. Oh. That sulfur kind of smell, it, it was kind of gross. The montage scenes at the end with Embeth as Miss Honey, that felt good because we actually got to have real conversations and we actually had to got to do really fun things like going rollerblading and having a picnic. Mm -hmm. Is it true that in the that famous little bitty pretty one scene, yes. where she's really getting her powers going, yeah. that Danny had the whole cast and crew dancing with you? He did. I am not a good dancer. <laughs> I've never been a very good dancer. So I think that I went up to Danny and I was like, Danny, I'm a little bit nervous. And he said, okay, well, here's the rule. That day, everybody has to dance. So everybody danced and my mom was dancing and you know the camera operators were dancing and the assistant directors were dancing. And it also wasn't to Itty Bitty Pretty One, it was to Harry Belafonte's Matilda. Uh, but they ended up changing the music. And I mean, they're both great songs. Why did they do that? I don't know, maybe, I don't know, but, but I think that they're both wonderful songs. I just think it's so funny when people say, oh, that song reminds me of you. And I'll think, well, that's so funny because that's not the song I associate with this scene. That's not your memory. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you were already having a hard time dancing and then they changed what <laughs> beat you were even going to? Come so, on. well, well, now I have plausible deniability. If people think that I'm not a good dancer, I can say, well, I was actually dancing to a different song. I, I don't know if there's a basic explanation, but you know, as a child, I remember the magic and the wonder of all the stuff's flying around. Yeah. How did they do some of that? Some of it was computer, I, like the chips flying around, that was that was computer. Yeah. But uh, a lot of things were on poles or they had people moving it. In fact, the doll. I remember there was somebody making her dance. They, they put, I think, like uh, holes in the couch and they had wires there and they made her dance just like that. And it was so fun. Do you still have the doll? I think I still have the doll somewhere. I wish I did. But for a long time, she was up on the mantelpiece in my house. She had kind of a place of honor there. We named her Wanda. Any other keepsakes, anything you or, or your family took from set? Yeah, I still have a hat that says Matilda, and I had a Matilda jacket. And I remember really liking the dress that I wore at the end uh, where Miss Honey and I are having a tea party, so I got to keep that dress. And I was very excited about that. I still have pictures of us, us at the playground and just having fun. And yeah. it's still, you know, it, it's still just a big part of my life. I mean, this is a sensitive question to ask you, but I was thinking what a time that must have been for you to be on this incredible movie set, and but you also have to go through your mom having cancer. Yeah. So what was the balance of that like for you and how does it make you remember that time? I think that it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me at that time because it kept me away from worrying and it, it made me not focus on it. And in fact, I, I realized later on that 
they would be planning these fun weekends and things for me to do and you know Danny and Rio would take me to the theater to see a play or to the movies or to just hang out at their house things like that and that was all usually done when my mother was in the hospital so it, it really did keep me distracted and it really did keep me happy and I had a lot of people on set who really loved me and really took care of me they dedicated the movie to my mother and I'm so glad that they did that because my mother worked so hard and she loved that movie so much and she loved Matilda so much so I really loved that they did that. I, I felt so glad when I saw that in the credits and I still feel happy when I see that now. My mother loved the book of Matilda so much, she actually used to read it out loud to my brother's classrooms. One of my earliest memories is her bringing me along. I think I maybe had a cold or an ear infection or something as a very small child, and I just curled up in the back of the room while she read it to them. And I just remember just being entranced and loving this story so much. And then now we're sitting here 25 years later and it's still this incredible experience and moment in your life. Yeah, it is it is remarkable to me. I think that there was a time in my life where I felt very frustrated because I felt almost like, you know, people knew me for Matilda but not for myself. And so it was strange. It felt like I was sort of being overshadowed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that I really struggled with that for a while. But now I think I'm at a place in my life where I, I just feel really grateful yeah. and really happy that I ever had that chance. Will we ever see you in a Matilda sequel? Because Danny DeVito <laughs> said, he said he could see that one day maybe Matilda has a daughter and it could Did happen. he see that? Did he, he did. say that? For a long time, I was very resistant to the idea of a Matilda sequel because I was like, well, the story wraps up so nicely. Right. You know, maybe there shouldn't be a sequel. But I love working with Danny. And the thing is, I, I don't act that much anymore, but when I do, it's usually with people I love. So I, I mean, I, I would not turn down the chance to work with him again, I don't okay. think. Okay, so, so it's a maybe. <laughs> For a long time, I probably would have told you no, but you know, I, I think, especially like in the past few months, like since I've been doing Cameo on Instagram, just all the messages that I get from people who love it, it, it really does mean a lot. It, it sounds like that, that fills you up, that gives you warmth. It does. For a long time, I think I couldn't connect with it. I, I, I just kind of didn't understand it. I, I had imposter syndrome. But lately, I'm just like, oh wow, people are showing this to their kids. People, I, people have named their children after characters from Matilda. And also people who had rough childhoods reach out to me all the time to say, thank you so much, Matilda got me through this because really? I knew that it wasn't always going to be like that. And that just, I mean, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about that. Just thinking about how how giving people hope is such an amazing thing. So I, I love that I was able to do that.